we still have not priced an option on a bond and we want to be able to do that at least in the classical models like Vlasicek model and for that we need um, it will be helpful to know so-called change of numeraire method which I kind of already mentioned in the uh, in the case when we were uh, using the market model to price caplets in the previous set of slides. Well, what is uh, numeraire? Numeraire uh, refers to the asset that you are using to discount other assets with. So it's the uh, unit of measurement if you want. If we are measuring everything in euros or we are measuring everything in dollars, here it's going to be measuring everything in uh, one asset versus another asset. So far we have measured everything relative to the bank account because we were discounting by the bank account. Okay? So we are measuring things in the in the sense of uh, uh, units of a bank account. Well, this is the idea. Bank account, the bank account doesn't really have any special role. Uh, the reason why we discount by the bank account is basically historical reason because that was the, like the first asset. Uh, you're just uh, computing present value by discounting by the bank account. But there is really no special reason uh, that uh, we cannot discount by other assets and then uh, try to price with, uh, with respect to discounting to the other assets. Uh, and then what we are going to require is that any security C, so C can be stock, bond, uh, claim, derivatives, options, anything. So suppose that we want to make any security C discounted by our asset S. So S is a fixed asset. It used to be the bank account, but now it may be something else. Uh, any security C discounted by our chosen uh, numeraire S, we want to find the probability PS such that uh, such a process discounted C by S is a martingale under such probability. Okay? Uh, what that means is that, well, we have the Martingale property. This is the Martingale property. It says the conditional expectation under probability PS, which I just denote here by superscript S, of the future is equal to today's value. Right? This is just the Martingale property. Expectation at capital T is equal to today's value. Well, then we can just move C of T to the other side and we have our formula. The formula is here. Uh, the pricing formula is just, just more general than, than what we had before. Uh, the price of any asset is equal to the price of the numeraire asset times expected value under the, this new probability which makes this ratio martingale. martingale. Uh, so that expectation of the future discounted payoff but discounted by the by this special asset that we have chosen right this is exactly the same idea that we did before with the bank account except now we are using s instead of the bank account right so if uh, if indeed the the s sub t is the bank account right which would be in our let's say black scholes case e to the r t then uh, this would tell you that the price of uh, an asset, CLT, is equal to uh, E to the RT times expectation uh, under Q, because when we use for as the bank account, that's our usual pricing probability Q, of the discounted, so in this case e to the minus r capital T. Let me just get this right. Uh, C of T, which you can write as expectation TQ of e to the minus r T minus T C of T, which is exactly our usual pricing, risk neutral pricing formula. Right? So what we are doing is just a special case of this uh, underlined uh, equation here, 
in which we simply discount by S instead of discounting by bank account. Why can this be helpful? Well, sometimes it may be easier to compute this expectation under some other S than this expectation under Q. And we will see examples. And if there is an explicit formula for your payoff, for the price of your payoff, you, you should be able to find it using this method. This method will, will find uh, the explicit formula if it exists. If, if um, an explicit formula does not exist, then, well, this is not going to help you. You just have to do it numerically um, under some probability, either Q or S probability. But, uh, uh, but if, there is, uh, if there exists an explicit formula, this method will find it uh, probably most efficiently than any other method. OK, let's see how to uh, use this. And in fact, I'm going to use it on the Black Scholes on the Black Scholes example for the call option. If you remember uh, in Black Scholes, I really only showed you for the risk neutral pricing, I only showed you how to price, how to compute EQ and here EQ of uh, of the first part which was uh, just uh, ju of the second term actually, which was minus strike price discounted, so discount strike price, and then it was indicator function S of t being bigger than k. Right? And this was simply just uh, minus k uh, discounted q probability of S of t being bigger than k. And then that was relatively easy to compute the probability that S of t is bigger than k. <coughs> just by using a normal distribution. But I never showed you how to find the first term. And I told you, well, you can do integration. And it's true, you can do integration. But actually, using this change of numerator method, we can reduce also the first term computation uh, to something like this, to computing probabilities. And let's, let's see how to do that. All right, so I want to compute this, this thing here. I want to compute, oh, sorry, this is just repeating the um, formula from the previous slide. So we have it here. This is formula for pricing uh, using S as a discount factor. What I want to compute, I'll call it D of T, is the expectation, the price of S of capital T times the indicator function, the option is in the money. The call option is in the money at the, at the end. Okay. This is the first term in the payoff of the call option. The one that I told you can be computed by integration, but I never really did it. I, and here I'm going to do it, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to have to integrate. I'm going to use my change of numerator method to compute it uh, more easily than uh, by integration. All right. Well, look, if I want to simplify this, it would be simplified if I can get rid of this S of T, the stock price here. Okay? This is what makes it harder, because then I cannot take expected value of the indicator function. I have to take expected value of S of T times the indica indicator function. Well, I can get rid of it if I use S itself as the numerator. Because then, using this formula, I will have to divide by s, which will cancel this s. Okay? So let's, let's uh, use that formula. This formula says that d of t is going to be s of t, you multiply by the value of the discounting uh, numerator asset, expectation, but now under s, I change to s expectation. And then it says, don't discount by the bank account. There is no bank account here. So mm, that disappears. Discount by S. But if I discount by S, S and S will cancel. And I will only have the indicator function. Yeah, it's perfect. Perfect for computing this uh, first term of the um, Black-Scholes uh, 
payoff payoff of the uh, call option, uh, you just don't discount by the bank account and discount by S, that which will cancel this S when you divide. And now we know that the expectation of the indicator of a random variable is just the probability. So I have S of T, probability uh, under S. We still don't know exactly what this probability is, but I know it exists. The Gestano theorem will guarantee to me that it exists. Uh, and I just need to compute that probability of S of T being larger than K, of the call option being in the money. Okay, um, what do I know about this probability? I know that this is the probability under which when I divide asset prices by S, I am going to have martingales. So I'm going to do a trick here, uh, because when I divide by S, I have martingales. Uh, I want S in the uh, denominator. Uh, so I'm going to write this S bigger than K. I'm going to write it as... 1 over s of t less than 1 over k. Okay, so this is what I do here. I do it as a probability 1 over s of t less than 1 over k. But then I'm also going to do a strange thing. I'm going to write 1 as e to the r t minus t. And this is just 1, right? Uh, why do I do it like this? Well, just to remind myself that this 1, I can think of 1 as a value of the uh, as the value of the bank account if you want uh, at time capital T uh, um, it's just any cash value it can be thought of as uh, something that started in the bank account I'm going then to look at the following process actually there is a typo here it should really be small t minus capital T it's the bank account where I start uh, with uh, e to the minus r capital T at the beginning and then in small t it's going to be e to the r um, small t minus capital T. Uh, that's, that's what I'm looking at. In, in any case, the point is that the denominator, the numerator is, uh, is just some cash in the bank account. And when you divide it by S under PS probability, by definition of the PS probability, it has to be a PS martingale. Because any asset discounted by S has to be PS martingale. And this is an asset, this is just a bank account, uh, some cash initial in the bank account, uh, um, growing in the bank account. Because it's a martingale, we know it's not going to have a DT term. And actually, we also know what the, uh, the W term will, will look like. So W now I denote by WS. Uh, the W term, well, you can do Ito's rule if you want, but uh, I'm just going to do it quickly here. We, it's really a function f of x equal to 1 over x. So if I take f prime of x, it's going to be minus 1 over x squared. So that's why you are going to, why you are going to get this minus here and then there will be because uh, I have exponentials it's going to be m times over m squared which will cancel so I will just have uh, I will just have m here uh, so uh, not, not m over m squared it's going to be s over s squared which is, which is going to give me 1 over s which is going to give me m you can just do it as rule if you want uh, and you will see you get this and the dt term you don't have to worry about, you know it has to be zero by the definition of Ws. Okay, when we change these probabilities using Gersano, uh, you can always do with the drift whatever you want, it's going to become zero, uh, but the volatility doesn't change. So the volatility doesn't matter which w you put is always the same, and you can get it from eta's rule. Okay, so we are going to get minus sigma m here, and then we know how m looks like m at capital T is m at small t, e to the minus one half sigma square capital T minus lowercase t, and minus um, sigma ws of capital T minus ws of lowercase t. Once I know that, I can uh, put it here on the left-hand side in my probability, 
and I can now just compute the probability that m of t is less than 1 over k, where this thing has a normal distribution with a variance capital T minus lowercase t. Alright, and that's now exactly the same computation that we did when we were pricing the second term in the Black Scholes formula, this one up here, uh, using risk neutral uh, pricing. It's exactly the same type of computation. And what it will give you eventually, if you do that, I'm not going to do the details because it's very similar to what we did, you are simply going to get S of t times n of d1. And the you will get the first term in the Black Scholes formula. Alright, uh, and uh, so this S of t, well, I mean, this probability is just going to be n of d1, right? This is just going to be n of d1. But S of t comes from, from uh, this formula up here, uh, and then when we compute it, you always multiply by S of t by the numerator asset, right? So you can get, using this idea of uh, choosing S as a numerator rather than the bank account as the numerator, uh, you can get the first term in the Black Scholes formula without any any integration. Right? So we are effectively solving a differential, partial differential equation without any integration, just by probabilistic methods. Because we know it's equal to expected value, and then we use this trick of changing the numerator to compute that expected value as a probability, and then we it just reduces to computing probabilities uh, of a normally distributed random variable.